Thank Love you very can. much. Um, as Doug said, I'm Deborah Tavares, and we're hosting five websites. Our main website is stopthecrime.net, and when you go to the home page, you can link to the other websites that we are hosting as well. We encourage uh, everyone to listen to this presentation with a, an open mind. Much of what you may hear is going to be outside of your reference because you're not being told this in the media. In fact, you have already been largely placed under mind control through programming through the media. So as you hear this, uh, look at the references that we will be presenting for yourselves and uh, understand your reality in the real world because you're not being told this. Now, how did all this begin for my husband and I? Uh, we are multi-generational home builders, our own business in Southern California for um, about three decades. We were unaware of the large agenda in play with uh, the changing of uh, home construction and the forced migration of the human population. It exhibited itself in a variety of ways uh, through our business uh, with increasing um, building codes and increasing costs, uh, eliminating affordability when they would say that they would like us to build low-income housing or moderate-income housing. We were finding that the very codes and policies within the cities were prohibiting us from building and reaching towards those um, populations that really truly needed housing. So as we moved away into what we had considered retirement, we then suddenly had much more time to look at what had occurred during our business. And that led us into the understanding of United Nations Agenda 21. And um, what first um, really caught my eye in the very beginning of the beginning was an email that I received from a retired neurologist friend of ours. And um, I read this public law 95-79 and was startled and decided that as we were going to pursue reality, we needed to actually go and put our hands on the information. So what I found on the internet that day, again, was public law 95-79 and it was uh, Title 50, Chapter 32, Section 1520, Chemical and Biological Warfare Program. Went on to say, the use of human subjects will be allowed for the testing of chemical and biological agents by the United States Department of Defense, accounting to congressional committees with respect to the experiments and studies. The Secretary of Defense may conduct tests and experiments involving the use of chemical and biological warfare agents on civilian populations within the United States. This was very disturbing because we had seen um, flyovers of spraying melathion over parts of Pasadena in Southern California in the 80s. It was becoming very clear that what we thought was our government wasn't. And we flew back to Washington, D.C. and went to the records department to find out about this um, resolution that I just told you about. And we left Washington, D.C. with this document that talks about these policies. That's how thick it is. And um, this literally forced us to look at reality and realize that our government work was not working in our best interest. Um, in fact, uh, we were being used for experimental purposes for population reduction and certainly modifying the human genome. So this, again, was part of the initial phases of our realization of reality. And that brings me into being able to discuss what the years of investigation and studies have brought to our attention. And today's focus is going to be primarily on primary water and the fact that because of primary water, we do not 
have a water shortage. And in fact, we have learned that water is a renewable. Just as we were deceived about oil and fossil fuels, we were told and taught in school that oil came from dead dinosaurs. Never did come from dead dinosaurs. Petroleum is a renewable energy on the planet as well. We have been tricked for revenue purposes and gain by those that want to hide the true scientific facts from us. So as we work through the presentation again, I will urge you to take your um, normal thinking, set it aside as best possible. This is good news. Understanding primary water is good news because we have a fresh, clean source of drinking water available to the global population with the knowledge and information that primary water exists. Now, I've interviewed Paul Power, who did this quote. He is um, heads uh, the um, website Primary Water Institute, and Paul's quote is this. It's hard to get the point across to my people, to many people in the United States, that the earth makes water. We can access water and solve our problems. We don't need massive storage facilities or aqueducts. Clean, virtually infinite sources of water are right under our feet. So let's stop and look at what you heard me just say that Paul said. He said, we don't need massive storage facilities or aqueducts. It's very important to understand what that means, and I'm going to uh, discuss it briefly, but I'm going to refer you to our website, primarywater.org, to some very important information as we move along. Uh, the storage facilities and aqueducts were set up to control the water and poison it. We have all been taught, sadly, that water comes from rain and snow melt. Actually, rain and snow melt is a result of the evaporation of primary water once it surfaces on the planet. To further that understanding, it's important to recognize that every single drop of water on the surface of the planet is a result of primary water. And again, thank Love you very much. Um, as Doug said, I'm Deborah Tavares, and we're hosting five websites. Our main website is stopthecrime.net, and when you go to the home page, you can link to the other websites that we are hosting as well. We encourage uh, everyone to listen to this presentation with a, an open mind. Much of what you may hear is going to be outside of your reference because you're not being told this in the media. In fact, you have already been largely placed under mind control through programming through the media. So as you hear this, uh, look at the references that we will be presenting for yourselves and uh, understand your reality in the real world because you're not being told this. Now, how did all this begin for my husband and I? Uh, we are multi-generational home builders our own business in Southern California for um, about three decades. We were unaware of the large agenda in play with uh, the changing of uh, home construction and the forced migration of the human population. It exhibited itself in a variety of ways uh, through our business uh, with increasing um, building codes and increasing costs. Uh, eliminating affordability when they would say that they would like us to build low-income housing or moderate-income housing. We were finding that the very codes and policies within the cities were prohibiting us from building and reaching towards those um, populations that really truly needed housing. So as we moved away into what we had considered retirement, we then suddenly had much more time to look at what had occurred during our business. And that led us into the understanding of United Nations Agenda 21. And um, what first um, really caught my eye in the very beginning of the beginning was an email that I received from a retired neurologist friend of ours. And um, I read this public law 95-79 and was startled 
and decided that as we were going to pursue reality, we needed to actually go and put our hands on the information. So what I found on the internet that day, again, was Public Law 95-79, and it was uh, Title 50, Chapter 32, Section 1520, Chemical and Biological Warfare Program went on to say the use of human subjects will be allowed for the testing of chemical and biological agents by the United States Department of Defense, accounting to congressional committees with respect to the experiments and studies. The Secretary of Defense may conduct tests and experiments involving the use of chemical and biological warfare agents on civilian populations within the United States. This was very disturbing because we had seen um, flyovers of spraying melathion over parts of Pasadena in Southern California in the 80s. It was becoming very clear that what we thought was our government wasn't. And what primary water results in its um, expression of this gorgeous um, lake in the middle of the sand dunes and would not be expected. But you're not being told about all the water opportunities globally. There's also um, the underground river in Mexico as well as hot springs all over the world. So, so what did we experience here in Northern California in the wine country uh, at the end of August of 2014? We had a 6.0 earthquake in Napa County, and it was in the midst of a very dry drought period. The streams and creeks were dry, and after that earthquake, water started to flow. The water agency um, personnel were stumped by where did this water come from? Well, again, uh, the earthquake allowed the fissures to open up, and the water was able to exit and that is primary water. So investigating this and interviewing Paul Power of uh, Primary Water Institute, we started to look at some of the corporate agencies that have deceived us. We're going to get into that a little bit more during this presentation. But a very disturbing um, map that we found on the Department of Interior shows the potential water supply crisis uh, by the year 2025. And it's a color-coded map of the western United States showing the conflict potential. And this is actually in Northern California, this portion of the map, of Sonoma County and Marin County. And it illustrates and demonstrates by this color coding that they an anticipate substantial conflict in our area. So when I looked at what they meant by substantial conflict, I found that they meant that people would defend their right to access water on their properties with the use of guns. So this is war. We are in a water warfare, and the use of, of um, guns is anticipated. This is a map, again, from the Department of Interior website showing the western United States and the color-coded areas of anticipated conflict and their levels of conflict expectation. Should be very disturbing to everybody that's watching this that this would appear on the Department of Interior website. Of course, the Department of Interior is part of the criminal corporate cabal that has taken over the United States of America. We learn, too, and this is a beautiful story with a very, very sad ending. In Libya, uh, Muammar Gaddafi used the oil revenues for the benefit of the Libyan people. Um, the regime uh, used those oil revenues to build what was to become the great man-made river project. This was a series of underground pipes that were installed in um, northern Libya, in the desert, in the Sahara Desert, that was delivering water for free to 70% of the Libyan people. 
During the war that was conducted on Libya by NATO and the United States, they blew up the great man-made river project. That threw Libya in a humanitarian crisis of not receiving the water that the people needed. In fact, we received information um, from uh, an insider who exposed what happened during the war of Libya and how the NATO bombs blew up the great man-made river project. And we were told by this insider that they, they had tin so soilmatic welling drig, rigs. They were called Challenger Limited. And it was operating in Libya, these tin uh, water drilling rigs. The reason for blowing the rigs up is that they were told that they looked like um, rocket launchers, which is of course not true. We know the capabilities of visualization from the, ground, from the air, and they blew up the rigs so that they could not reestablish their water supply. And this um, insider went on to tell, tell us that uh, he cannot talk specifically about the projects that they did with Momar Qaddafi, uh, but that the wells that were dug were 1,800 to 2,400 feet more or less in depth. The rigs, which were again the Challenger Limited, which by the way, and interestingly enough, are manufactured out of the UK. But the rigs easily handled the drilling and um, again, uh, the dismay that they were blown up. And he went on to state that Gaddafi was about to release the Libyan gold dinar to the continent. The Libyans were very money wealthy, though they had very little else. They had much greater freedom. and The, the chosen bankers could not let them have this control over North Africa. He went on to say, it's very sickening uh, what our country and NATO did and has done to the wonderful people in Libya. The central banks wanted complete control over the Libyan economy. And they also don't want you to know about primary water. On primarywater.org, there is a book that is considered by many to be the Water Bible. It's a free download from the website. It is entitled, New Water for a Thirsty World. It was released in the early 60s. Uh, the um, author was Michael Salzman, S-A-L-Z-M-A-N. And the foreword was written by Aldous Huxley. It's a very important read. It talks about um, the attempts uh, to inform the water barons in Southern California that the California aqueduct was not necessary to build. It was actually a huge monetary investment into controlling and eliminating and reducing the people's right to access this free resource that is a renewable within the planet itself. We stumbled upon a very disturbing document. And I will go into it just a bit but it will be available uh, as a download uh, once this YouTube is released. It is called The Water Market USA. This document was found out of the United Kingdom, and it talks about uh, how uh, corporate agencies would be used to uh, take over the public water system in the cities throughout the United States and who would be appointed to do that. And there will be a list that we'll talk about uh, as those appointed agencies. We were also told that the infrastructure for both water and gas would be left unrepaired so that uh, we would be easy pickings for private-public partnerships that were based and created by the international banking community and other corporate entities to take over the water supply in the United States. And um, again, this uh, booklet is a free download from primarywater.org. It looks like this. And you can see that I've highlighted and tagged many of the pages. It's extremely disturbing. 
but it will let you know how your local communities and your representatives in your local cities and in your counties are misleading you about the water facts because they don't understand reality themselves. So this is important information. Would recommend uh, you download the copy that we have highlighted. So what you're seeing here are some of our personal highlights, which we have done on one of the copies that you can download for free. There's another copy that has uh, eliminated the highlights, so you can download either one. But it goes on to talk about T. Boone Pickens in uh, Texas and how he uh, has certainly been uh, privatizing the water as best possible in Texas. Texas is far advanced with privatization of the water supply. Um, it talks also about um, General Electric, uh, Rothschild, and many of the um, power uh, house influence in the United States from a global direction. And one of the reasons it has been difficult to privatize the water as quickly as they would like in the United States is that the United States has multiple uh, public pr um, water agencies in various cities. And because of that patchwork of water agencies, it's been more difficult for the control to take place. So what we see happening now in the United States is the EPA, which is the, um, the point um, team to bring about uh, privatization of the water, is now requiring through state policies and local policies um, additional cost for mitigating uh, fish uh, extinctions, for uh, building aspects to the existing water infrastructure that are unnecessary so that they bankrupt the funds in the local communities and force the local water agencies to ultimately uh, turn the control of their agencies over to private public partnerships. So that is the plan. Uh, the plan is very similar to the um, John Perkins, the uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, this is what we have occurring in every single city and every county throughout the country and the world. Uh, this is another document that we found, uh, and this was out of Israel. Uh, this is a Goldman Sachs document, another free download from StopTheCrime.net, a very disturbing document as well. It lists a number of the um, agencies that are involved in the taking of the water supply. But what I found interesting, and there are many, um, is it talks about growing energy demand drives water use. U.S. shale and gas development has been aided by the United States' abundant water resources. And they go on to say that nat natural gas is a growing alternative to oil led by the shale revolution in the United States. The extraction, unconventional gas, is water intensive and the, and the adequate water supply is a critical ingredient to shale production. Many people have been protesting um, fracking. Fracking is a new way in which to uh, poison the groundwater aquifers and bring about increasing toxins of water as a global genocide program increases and intensifies. So again, a sustainable growth, taking a deep dive into water presented by Goldman Sachs is an extremely important document to take a look at. Uh, towards the um, end of this document, you will read uh, many of the agencies that have been utilized to bring about what we're facing here in our country and overseas as well. Now here in Northern California, we're under direct assault from the water agencies. Uh, we have been identified as um, the Russian River watershed area in many locations here in Sonoma County. Keeping in mind that the Russian River tributary and watershed area also encompasses Bohemian Grove. We also learned that Pacific Gas and Electric, PG&E as we know it here in Northern California, that provides us with gas, uh, in many instances, as well as electricity, is run by Rothschild. You can look that up for yourself simply by typing in PG&E and Rothschild, 
a Rothschild CEO, sits on the board of PG&E. You will also learn um, that PG&E bought the water rights, secured them in 1930 of the Eel River, which is the headwater for the Russian River. The Russian River in Sonoma County is the water that uh, is, is um, our, known, uh, our known source of water for Sonoma County as well as Marin County that uh, is now uh, literally being controlled by Rothschild. Now we don't need to have water rights because we have plenty of water. So what is extremely important to understand is the slow incremental system that has been put in place to create the illusion of um, reduced water resources. Now, what is happening in our communities that is advancing these intolerable and false programs? There are many reasons for this. Again, I certainly would recommend that everybody look at Confessions of an Economic Hip Man by John Perkins. He uh, was a CIA whistleblower, and he talks about how the CIA was used uh, abroad to take down countries and to take over their resources. But we have other organizations as well, such as an organization that has the uh, initials ICF. And what we find in this organization, it's um, ICF International, or ICF Jones and Stokes. And ICF has partnered with many governments, not just the United States and they serve commercial clients to deliver consulting services and technology solutions in energy, climate change, environment, transportation, and social programs. So I mention ICF because ICF is one of many of the consulting firms that the U.S. water market document discusses, uh, again, all the way in which uh, control is being handed over under UN policies. Now, I will just show you, this is uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman by John Perkins. I would recommend that everyone also watch the movie called No Escape. It's a new release, but it is a story about water in Malaysia and the economic hit team that was deployed there to take the water resources from the people. Now, uh, here in Northern California, and the reason I'm illustrating Northern California is because, again, as I said, Northern California is the target for water control, particularly in rural and country settings. Uh, what we have uh, here in California and in every state, in fact, to, in our federal government as well, is dictatorships through the creation of, um, of uh, crises. They identify a crisis, then they bring in executive orders and policies that no one votes for. And this is what is illustrated in Senate Report 93549. The United States is no longer a country with representation. The United States is a dictatorship being organized by corporate systems. We are a courtocracy, as many people refer to it. If you want to know what is ahead of you, rather than seeking information from your legislators or going down to your local city and thinking that they're going to understand what is ahead of you, it's important to go to the internet and search the Federal Registry. When you search the Federal Registry, you find out about the executive orders that are becoming the law of the land and have been since before 1933. So we are being run and ruled by executive orders, both on a federal level and a state level. And um, they're collecting data. So the take home of this presentation, if you remember nothing else, it is to not consent. Do not fill out forms, answer surveys or questionnaires or participate in petitions. So what we're finding, again, not only on a state and local level, but a federal level as well, 
is um, creating an emergency and then creating policies via executive order that no one has voted upon and being forced by the corporate controlling factor. And uh, on StopTheCrime.net, we have a number of documents we recommend that people read. Uh, one certainly is um, uh, there that you can download at the top of the website. Uh, what we're seeing here in California and a way in which to police uh, neighbors in your communities is a um, application for your iPhone. It's an application that will tattle on your neighbors or, and or the visualization of excessive water use. So what does excessive water use look like? Soon it will be anything that remains green on your property. Right now, it is the uh, idea that you are to remove your lawns. Many cities now have um, cash for grass programs. They'll pay people to take out their lawns in exchange for cash. Now, uh, what is resulting with all of this? Increased rodents and infestation in people's homes as they are reducing the water supply on the exterior of the homes. Children are no longer able to play on green grass and it's reducing our oxygen supply among many other aspects of reduction. So um, what I know many people are doing is they're starting to um, eliminate the easy view of their properties, either by putting up fences, we're noticing a lot of fences being built, and lots of extra landscaping being installed to create a green screen and increase oxygen. So um, it, it, the entire aspect of what is occurring in California, of course, is also based upon the weather modification programs and we're beyond modification. We're talking about the weaponization of the weather capabilities that the military had long since sought to achieve. And we've seen it as far back as the 1930s and certainly during Vietnam in the 60s when the weather was able to be controlled to manipulate the supply line on the Ho Chi Minh Trail. So as difficult as this may be to understand the extent of manipulating the climate, it's important to understand climate change is the result of the capability of manipulating the weather completely. I'm gonna repeat that, climate change is the result of manipulating the weather completely. Now we have another website called toxicsky.org and I would recommend that you take a look at the patents and the information around manipulating the weather completely. The drought, of course, has been manipulated. The water has been diverted and certainly being dumped on other agricultural states throughout the United States, flooding out many farmers and ranchers. And um, what we've seen recently here in the Midwest is continued rain, where it has been very difficult for farmers to bring in their, their hay, which are crops and feed for livestock, because the hay is wet, they can't harvest it and bale it because it will mildew. It's just one small aspect of what we see occurring. Again, I referred to the Federal Register. I would recommend that uh, everyone take a look at the executive orders that are in place to change the face of the world. And it also includes genetically modifying humans. And this is a very important aspect to the water conversation today, is the human aspect of modifying the water supply. As we proceed with understanding our reality on um, a government level, it's also um, in just important to take a slow look at the presentation and the slides because you can go and investigate each and every slide that you are seeing. I'm not going to take the time to read this. You can pause the, the slide presentation and read this for yourself. I am going to discuss the American Bar Association. And this is very critical 
because the American Bar Association has confirmed its commitment to support and reaffirm sustainable development, which is climate change. The American Bar Association adopted internationally accepted concept of sustainable development as recognized at the United Nations Conference on the Environment and Development in 1992 and subsequent international conferences. So we're facing a legal system that many people assume is a legal system for their benefit and for your rights, when in fact the entire court system within the United States has been uh, set up by Rothschild. The bar card means British Accreditation Regency. And the court system long ago was set up by Rothschild. So we have no apparatus in which to really secure our rights or our illusion that there is an apparatus to secure our rights. And even at this point, if we had an apparatus that could lead us into securing more rights, we don't have the power to enforce it because the police forces are all paid by the criminal cabal. So this is very difficult for many people to understand. So I would recommend that you research this yourself to understand the depths of the ensnarement that we are all facing. Now, I found this to be very interesting. Um, this was an article in our local newspaper, The Press Democrat in Sonoma County. And it was buried back in the newspaper, but it talked about Sonoma County reduces greenhouse gas emissions, but falls short of the target. Let's talk about that. What are they talking about? First of all, the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions is false, bogus science. So they're telling everybody that you haven't reduced enough, and you're gonna to have to amp up your restrictions. Anytime you hear reductions in energy resources, that is elimination of population and animals. This is all bogus. And we have a YouTube up and out. It's entitled, Who's Running America and the Climate Action Plans? Sonoma County has adopted the climate action plans as pursuant to the executive order through the President of the United States. And every single city, every single county, and every single state across the country is obligated to adopt climate action plans. What we have in our city councils are UN agenda members that are ramrodding policies that are endangering the very next breath we're all going to expect to be able to make. So um, they're going to be amplifying the required reductions. Now, this is another article that I came across here in a uh, newspaper here in Northern California entitled Sour Grapes in Wine Country. Intense challenges to wineries erupt. What is being created with the illusion of sh restricted water resources is infighting between the municipal city dwellers and the vineyards. The city dwellers do not understand why the wineries are able to use water unrestricted and they are having to restrict their water use. Well, we don't have a water shortage for one. Also, we've come to learn that Mondavi and some of the other wineries here in the wine country of Northern California are run by Rothschild. And uh, so uh, certainly uh, Rothschild and company understands the true science of water. But what I found interesting in this um, article and also disturbing was they were talking about the infighting being created again between um, municipal water users or city water users and the vineyards. But it says, such wineries overuse precious limited resources such as water, as air, and land. Now you just heard me say something that you should pause and consider. I'm gonna read it again, because I had to when I read this. It says, such wineries overuse precious limited resources, such as water, air, and land, which threatens the environment and the quality of life 
in our semi-rural region. We're going to get into air in a minute. What is happening? The goal to control every single resource, including human resources. We are resources. The word that we learned about this is called commodification. Commodification, as we've exhibited, means uh, commodification is about unsellable things being sellable. Now we can look at that in context of oil, because certainly oil is a process of the earth, but we were deceived. Certainly there needs to be costs for extracting and delivery, but we've been taught that it's a limited resource. The same thing as water. Air is on the docket to be controlled as well. What we have happening is the deforestation globally of plant material and plant life. And as we lose the plants that create our oxygen, we're going to have reduced oxygen accessibility. Not only uh, is the intention to control the air, uh, it's important to understand what the EPA is doing across the country. Many people understand that the EPA is defining sources of water access that are becoming less accessible to property owners, such as drainage ditches, streams across um, property owners' properties, uh, they're being told they can't access the water. Well, the definition of water, as explained, is unimaginable. The EPA is determining and defining water as all chemical components of water. So not just our definition of fluid, but the chemical aspect of water. They want and intend to control everything down to the chemical components, own it and sell it. That is commodification. So what we're missing in our discussions generally is the enormity of the intention that is in written policies easily accessible by everyone and you can access this information for yourselves. Important also to understand there has been a change of definition in the words. Words are now being created that give us peace of mind. For example, clean water rule, def definition of water of the United States. And uh, this is actually where they talk about um, the components of water within this clean water rule. First of all, there isn't clean water. And the rules are designed to eliminate water, to poison the water. And um, when we look at this, we realize that the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers are in the process of separating fact from fiction uh, by revealing this, and we just haven't found this information. We don't understand how we are being manipulated, but yet all the information is in plain sight. Now I told you earlier that we would show a list of the corporations that have been presented in the documents that are free downloads um, that we discussed earlier in this presentation. These are just a few of the um, corporations that are identified in these documents. The World Bank, Viola, which is Rothschild. Uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, the World Energy Council. I'm not going to read every single one of them, but many of you will resonate with Nestle. Coca-Cola, the Rand Corporation. NASA, the Scripps Institute. NOAA, which stands for National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, Bechtel Corporation, EPA, which means Environmental Protection Agency, Department of Interior, USGS, the United States Geological Survey, Army Corps of Engineers, the Bureau of Reclamation, General Electric. We'll go on to talk about Starbucks, General Motors, and many of the utility companies, as we now know, as well as pharmaceutical Cover companies, meeting. in fact, 
uh, in San Jose that was presented by a pharmaceutical uh, firm that said their intention of pharmaceuticals in the future is for pharmaceuticals to be considered food. So we are being engineered on every single level. We also know that uh, we're missing components in water that uh, are allowing the modification of our brains. This is all intentional. We also know too that the increased electromagnetic pulses from all of the cell phone towers, our wireless devices, the smart meters on your home are all interacting with your neurons. This is causing total control of our minds. The goal is total and complete mind control, taking over people's free will to do as they choose and creating literally assassins within our communities that will weigh destruction on the population. Again, remember the Tattletale app on water. The um, intention is to self-police communities through a loud destruction and fear by community members themselves. So um, we have uh, task force, forces that are going through uh, rural areas now and identifying over users. And we are being met now with meetings. Uh, what I discovered too, and this is very interesting. Uh, many of you may remember the movie Aaron Brockovich and the PG&E um, being caught and fined for the uh, chromium that was leached into a town uh, in Northern California. Well, we discovered that PG&E nears the plan to filter chromium on the Colorado River, and they're saying that it could take 30 years to decontaminate the site that they poisoned. And they've been studying this now for about 30 years, I mean 13 years, uh, the effects of this dangerous chemical, uh, uh, chromium, and the water has ceased, seeped underground where it has remained for over 13 years from a facility that Pacific Gas and Electric is operating. That is AKA Rothschild. The Colorado River is being intentionally poisoned. This is the plan, this is the agenda. There is no mistake. So what do we have? Um, this entire uh, attack and assault with um, the illusion of water shortages and the poisoning of our water supply is going to create such fear that people will <coughs> demand water treatment systems to the water for health benefits and purposes. And that's leading to sewer, from sewer to tap. People will start to agree and accept sewer water going through water treatment plants and then desalinization. This is where the big money is to be made. This is illustrated to us in those documents that I discussed earlier, the US um, A water market and the Goldman Sachs document. They talk about the tremendous profits that will be gained from our fear of toxic water, which is being intentionally poisoned. Uh, there are many studies that talk about the poison in the water supply. The Harvard University has a study. Um, it's been recommended that no one drink out of the tap and that you do not drink bottled water, highly poisonous. Dr. Mercola talks about the chro chromium. This is um, chlor chlor chlorinamine, which causes collateral health damage. This is a very, very important thesis that um, you can just type in uh, Dr. Wynn, W-I-N-N, Parker. He has a program on RBN, a Republic Broadcast Radio, every Sunday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Pacific time. This is his study on the drinking water and the known fact that the additives of chlorine um, are causing cancer. And they've known the effects. They actually experimented on the civilian population in the mid-50s in San Diego. 
and they learned that um, cancer was being caused. I mentioned earlier about the uh, a wave of infestation of rodents in California. Certainly what we're finding now is our animals uh, are carriers for many funguses and mildews and bacteria. People are going to become fearful of their animals. And we have a document that talks about that that we actually found, again, out of the UK, where people will start turning to robotized pets because they'll believe that the real thing is too toxic. And while this sounds like a sci-fi movie script, I assure you, all the documents are available for you to see for yourself. Now, we discovered something interesting in the hype here in California. Certainly, back in um, July, August, we were hearing about Mountain House, a city in central California that was destined to run out of water within 24 to 48 hours. They were not going to have water. And um, actually, our research team called Mountain House and talked to a number of realtors in the area to find out about their dire situation of water turning off. The realtors knew nothing of this. Because certainly you would think that the realtors would have to write in purchase agreements that the houses they're selling are not going to have any water. But they were oblivious to what was happening in Mountain House. In fact, one realtor only found out about the dire straits of Mountain House because an out-of-state relative called them and said, oh my gosh, you have how many days of water left? And then that's when they found out. So certainly you have to ask yourself a question. Something's odd here. Something's off. Why is Mountain House uh, being staged to be uh, a media um, description of running out of water in a community? Well, when we investigated, we found out in the early 90s that the land that this um, 5,800 um, house community um, well, I think maybe close to 10,000 homes are in this Mountain House development. First of all, it's important to understand that uh, Mountain House is a UN Agenda 21 smart growth community, and they proudly uh, state that. And it is a census-designated place. Well, uh, in researching that, we found that one of the corporations that purchased the land originally to build this community that does not have a normal um, city council. They're actually run by um, a, a um, board. They have a board much like a homeowners association. Uh, was, the land was originally purchased via Rothschild and then during the recession in California Mountain House sat for a while before it was built out and uh, now they've built out Mountain House. Um, it is a good go-between for people that want to commute into San Francisco. It has schools. They've just completed a high school. But Mountain House is being used as a stage. It's a created community to be used as a stage for the um, shortage of water. And then we found out that the water agency that serves Mountain House, because Mountain House um, had agreed to pay the water agency not to turn off the water, uh, then we were told in this article that uh, that water agency was, was fined $1.5 million for stealing water and serving Mountain House when they were supposed to have water reduction. So we know this is all media hype. It would be very interesting to see if that $1.5 million fine was ever collected from the water agency. We also have a new ruralism taking place in California and across the country and globally as well. Um, communities are being redesigned. Um, they're human settlement zones, as we often refer to them. But they're more than that. Um, and we have an illustration here in Central California. Few people know that this exists, but it's called Quay Valley, and it's in the San Joaquin Valley where we have severe water shortages. And um, a 7,500-acre sustainable green town in Kings County in Central California is on the books to be constructed. It's going to have upwards of 25,000 homes. Originally, the proposal was for double that. Uh, we have certainly looked at this, 
It is along the new um, uh, rail that has, is being built and being paid for at about $52 million and counting here in California. Another very interesting fact is uh, the money to be made on groundwater banking. So what is groundwater banking? We're hearing a lot about aquifers that are being over pumped. We're hearing uh, much about land subsidence, which is the collapse of the land because of the elimination of the water in the aquifers, which is being allowed. So what is going to occur is the toxic water is going to be allowed to fill these depleted aquifers. They're going to then say, we found water in these aquifers, highly toxic. They'll charge us more money for that, and they will be banking water. So in some communities where they fill the aquifers with highly toxic water, trucks will be used to deliver water in other communities that they're not allowing easy access to water, another water theft. So again, uh, there's a document entitled, Who is Running America? The Bankruptcy of America, the Corporate United States, and the New World Order. I would highly recommend reading this. It again, Who is Running America? Um, and the New World Order. And you'll learn about a word called Perens Patriae. Perens Patriae means government is our parent. And this is also on the CDC website in respect to vaccinations. The government is our parent. Parens patriae, we have no rights, as we believe that we do. Again, uh, you can download information from toxicsky.org to read about the use of the chemtrailing program, as many people call it, but this is the weaponization of the weather. You can look at patents. You can look at weather modification programs. This is a very interesting uh, document. It was a document dated in uh, March of 1997. It came out of the Phillips Laboratory, and there was the senior scientist uh, also uh, that was involved with the advanced uh, weapons and the instruction of technology. And they talk about how weather would be used to degrade the enemy. It's important to understand we are the enemy. All of us are the enemy. If we had true, just representation, we would not be being poisoned on every level. Our food, water, air, all highly toxic. So they talk about how they would degrade the enemy, storm enhancement, um, precipitation denial, which is what we have here with the drought in California, deny fresh water, induce a drought. Uh, again, this is all information that has been available. Anyone could look at this. It's available. So our call to action are many. Education being the most important aspect. No one can do anything unless they understand what is. And what many people are doing are doing banner hangs on their vehicles. An illustration of that is here. Uh, we have many banners that we have created that you can contact uh, stopthecrime.net and obtain at a very low cost if you are so inclined to do so. Uh, the box you see by the front wheel is a box of flyers so that people can actually stop and pick up a flyer as they see the banner. Uh, we certainly uh, have worked very hard to get YouTubes up and out and you can download flyers from primarywater.org and distribute them. We have half-page double-sided flyers, um, and it has referencing to YouTubes that are recommended for people to learn more information. I want to um, certainly leave you with the final thought. We must not comply. We must not engage. When you receive a request to fill out a form from this corporate, corrupt cabal. Don't fill out the form. They are using all of us for massive data collection and massive manipulation. None of the forms serve our best interest. 
Most everything is based on a false science and a denial of real truth and facts. So I encourage all of you to learn more about primary water and your reality on this planet that we all call home. Thank you very much.